retro rock plays everything. Hey there, real gamers and fellow gate holders. Retro Rob here, and today we're going to be looking at another small handheld gaming device. This one's kind of special to me because it features one of my favorite games, and that game is Bubble Bobble. Oh, yeah. Um, I did one of these other pocket players a while back, and it got kind of a mediocre review, so I'm really hoping that they corrected some of the things. I know one of my complaints with the D-pad is probably going to be mitigated here because I only have to go right and left instead of right, left, up, and down. So I think the kind of goofy gamepad on this is going to work out for me, but we'll see how that goes. But I think we're going to start by inspecting the front of the box, and this is what I'm talking about with boxes, by the way. Notice this magnetic clasp. Just look at it. This artwork makes me want to buy, which is probably why I did. Those of you in the Chinese markets, take note. This is what a box should look like if you're trying to sell it. All right. Look at the device itself. It is yellow on green. Not exactly the most attractive color. I would have preferred kind of a light blue, which also would have looked pretty bad, but... They would have fit my personal preferences. Looking at the top part of the flap, you can see Bubble Bobble, Bubble Bobble Part 2, and Rainbow Islands are in here. Now, I realize that I show a lot of Famiclones on this station, and they have like a million games in them. Uh, but this is a licensed one, and I think if you're going to license something, <laughs> at least these are three great games to license. Even though they're, you know, NES versions of them, I'm pretty sure anyway, uh, the NES, you know, had great versions of these games. So it's, it's going to be good. I'm pretty sure. Unless the controls let me down. I'm hopeful. You know what? If this is a disappointment, I'm going to be so... Eh, I'm gonna, I don't think I'm going to be reconcilable for a while. Really. The right side of the box says Bubble Bobble. The left side of the box. The really good artwork continues. Really, this is a very attractive box. I cannot say enough good about it. You know, if we were only reviewing a box, this would be getting a big solid thumbs up. The top of the box. Look at the top. That is pretty sweet. Again, if I was just reviewing a box, we'd be really well off here. The bottom of the box has my arcade's address on it. So if you'd like to write something, to my arcade right there or give them a call give them a call tell them rob said hi warning not suitable for children under three years old choking hazards small parts warning this video is not suitable for those under the age of 13. it's probably not suitable for those under 18 just for the record hey what are you looking at the back of the box large full color screen <laughs> I was expecting to read more features, but apparently that is the only feature this game system has. And uh, glad they didn't mention the sound, because if they haven't changed that, whoo, man. Yeah, the sound on the last one I did was pretty bad. Register products at myarcadegaming.com. Can, can you register it on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram as well? Hmm, weird. Powered by four AAA batteries or micro USB that's not included. I'm gonna have to go scrounging around for AAA batteries. <sighs> you know, double A's would be nice, guys. Just saying. Let's unbox this beauty. <laughs> Anything else in here? No. We'll look at that in a minute. If you have never seen a My Arcade manual. They are probably the most complete manuals out there. They're also printed in several languages, so they're like really, really thick. I mean, just, <laughs> it's ridiculous. For such a small device to have such a large manual is insane. But again, it's in several languages and it is quite a complete little thing showing you where to put the batteries uh, and usually mentions a little bit about the game as well. I can't even find English in here. Here's the Netherlands. Are we last? We should be last. Nope. Wait, <laughs> we're first. Well, gotta be as smart as the piece of paper, I guess. There it is. Some battery information. Worry about that leakage. 
and warranty. There we go. Next, we have something new because I don't think I've seen this before. The Pocket Player Collectible Handheld Series. Oh, and there we go. And there's the original, the Pac-Man Pocket Player with Pac-Man, Pac-Panic, and Pac-Mania. And that one I thought was okay, uh, but had some significant problems with sound and a little bit with control. Sorry if you heard that, like, moving around. We got Miss Pac-Man, Pocket Player, with Miss Pac-Man, Mappy, and Sky Kid. Why not Pac-Land? They could have done Pac-Land. We've got the Galaga Pocket Player with Galaga, Galaxia, and Xevious. We've got the Dig Dug Player with Dig Dug, Dig Dug 2. That's a good idea. And Tower of Draga. Of course, have this one. And uh, we'll go through that one in a minute. And what is this one? Don Doki Don. Get out of here, check and pops on this. This is an unusual one. I'm gonna go looking for this one. We will cover this one, I think, if I can find it. Dang, that's interesting. Anything on the back? No, just blue. Well, let's look at the device. Here we go. By chance, did they, they did, they installed the lanyard. Thanks, I appreciate that. I hate having to put those in. All right, D-pad. A, B, nice little details on here. Uh, these are not stickers, they're actually printed on. That's nice, at least they don't feel like stickers. I think they're painted on, be darned. Select and start, these are probably NES ROMs it runs, so not a surprise. Looking at the top here, I believe that's micro, yep it is, micro USB. And then we've got an on off switch, volume up and down, thank you for that. I like it when they have an up and down separate instead of you just hitting one big button. And looking around, is that just headphones? Yes, it's just a headphone jack, so apparently there's no video out on this. Copyright, Tato, Potato Corporation. On the back, a little bit more detail than I expected. There's actually, look at that. A button, bubble, B button, jump. A button, rainbow, B button, jump. Very nice. And I'm gonna guess these just pull down. I'm gonna guess these just pull down. I'm gonna get, well, at least I don't have to unscrew anything. So there's that. Let's put some batteries in. Put those batteries in. I like that you're seeing more of my hand than you are of the device. That's good work there. There we go. <laughs> There's printing on the back. It says, My Arcade. In case you lose it, you can identify what device it came off of. Welcome to the ASMR portion of the video. We're gonna peel this off of the screen. I'm probably gonna have to fake that noise because I didn't hear anything. Thumbs up. Comment and subscribe or I will go Skynet on your butt. And there we are on the main menu. We've got Bubble Bobble, Bubble Bobble Part 2, and Rainbow Islands. We can get to them by pressing up and down on the D-pad. And here we go with some Bubble Bobble. Going to hit start right here. There is a continue and password function available. I haven't got the continue to work even though I looked at the manual. So remember when I told you that it had a very complete manual? Well, no. Let's hit start. Let's make a journey to the Cave of Monsters. Joy! And... Yeah, the controls work pretty well. The sound is not amazing, but it is not as tore up from the floor up as the... Pac-Man unit was. Yeah, this works pretty nice. I cannot believe I missed that. So, oops, the uh, D-pad and the buttons are a wee bit mushy, 
but they're definitely suitable for playing this. I'm pretty sure I'd be having an easier time if I was holding this as you generally would while you were playing it. Really not too bad. Um, hmm, yeah. No. Works just fine and really doesn't sound that bad. That said, if you crank it up, it's really pretty tinny. There's like no bass in this at all. Come on, come back on. Well, I messed that up. One more level for the road. There we go. Booyah! This is a great game. Do I still have anything left? No. I should have collected all those though. Alright, let's try Bubble Bobble 2. Bubble Bobble Part 2. Graphically, I like this game quite a bit. I always thought it was a really good version of Bubble Bobble. If you've ever played Parasol Stars, a lot of the levels... I'm not sure who cribbed who here. I mean, it's the same series, but a lot of the levels and enemies from Parasol Stars are in this one. I saw Parasol Stars first. I was a big PC Engine fan, or Turbo Graphics as we called it in the US. So I played that particular game first. But uh, anyway, just note, they're, they're similar. I don't know how that matters really, but it does. To some people, I'm sure. <laughs> Maybe not, I don't know. All right, let's finish. One more level here. And, oh, missed it. Love doing this. Oop. Oh, no, I didn't shift around enough. Rats. There's some slowdown, huh? And I've seen this on every emulation of this game. I should really try and get the original and see if it does the exact same thing. That much slowdown. Yay! Let's go check out Rainbow Islands. Rainbow Islands time! Basic idea here is unlike Bubble Bobble, where you're trying to kill everything, you're really just trying to go further and further up while scoring points. And if I'm making it look easy, it's because I'm really not playing it right. I'm supposed to be trying to collect a lot. Eh, come on. Hurry up. These rainbows don't stay forever. Ooh, nice. It's kind of funny about this one is, I know a lot of people, this is like their favorite of the series. And to me, it's the weakest of the series. Kind of like my gameplay. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's try one more level here. I like the tune, and I can definitely tell that the sound, either, either it's doing a better job with the emulation, or they put a better speaker in here. But it definitely, definitely sounds way better. And that doesn't mean it sounds great though. It just means it sounds way better. It was really bad on the Pac-Man one. Hmm. Not bad. Oh, I'm getting up there. Oh, I'm not. All right, let's get a verdict on this thing. So what's the verdict on the My Arcade Bubble Bobble handheld game player? Well, I'm pretty happy with it. 
I paid around $27 for it, which I think is a little bit steep. I'd rather see it in at about $20 for a licensed game system like this. Note that there are just so many of those little uh, Famicom handhelds that you can get for $15 to $20 that have hundreds of games, but sometimes it's nice to have something that's actually licensed. Also, the controllers worked really quite well on here. Uh, the sound is adequate, if not great, and the plastic quality is really pretty decent, and it includes a nice little lanyard. Again, also its appearance. Whether you want this or not really depends on how much you love Bubble Bobble. If you're a big Bubble Bobble fan, you want to share it with the kids, or you want to play it yourself, you're going to love it. If you don't, this probably is going to do nothing to convince you, but it's a great way to play it nonetheless. I want to thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more, and I'll see you in a couple days. Bye!